What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to run RetroArch and play your favorite retro games on your Amazon Fire Stick. Now this method will also work with the Amazon Fire TV or the Amazon Fire Cube or pretty much any other Android device. But since the Fire Stick was only $20 on Prime Day, I know a lot of people got a hold of one and they want to know how to do this. I recently made a video showing some gameplay on the Amazon Fire Stick. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. Before we get started here, there are a few things you're going to need. Now, the main thing being a controller. This is a GameSir G3S Bluetooth controller. They're very cheap on Amazon. This is my go-to controller for Android devices. It just syncs up really well. You don't have to go with this controller. You could also use a PS4 controller, an Xbox One S controller, an Amazon Fire controller. As long as the gamepad is compatible with Android and has Bluetooth, it'll sync up with the Amazon Fire Stick. The next thing I suggest is an OTG adapter. Now this is a Kirin Squid Cable. You can plug in three different USB devices plus power your Amazon Fire Stick from there. You can also use a right angle USB OTG adapter as long as it has power in. Now the reason we're gonna be using this is because we want more storage for ROMs. The Amazon Fire Stick does have eight gigabytes of storage, but after the OS and everything's installed, we're only left with about four and a half gigabytes. So we definitely want a little more storage to hold more games. You can always just store what you could on the device itself and not use an OTG cable, but this makes side loading and adding more games so much easier. If you do end up going with the Squid Cable, make sure it's a Kieran branded cable. I've tried several of them. The only one that worked was this Kieran here. Links for everything will be in the description. The final thing you want is some sort of USB drive. You can use a USB 2.0 drive or a USB 3.0 drive. The highest capacity that I've tested myself is a 128 GB SanDisk USB 3.0 drive. You could always go with an external hard drive, but make sure it is powered from the wall and not just from the USB port. The Amazon Fire Stick just can't put out enough amperage to get that thing spinning up. So real quick, this is the exact setup I use. Amazon Fire Stick, a right angle adapter, a 32 gigabyte USB 2.0 drive, and a GameSir G3S controller. I went with the right angled OTG adapter with power in because I like the way it looks. It's not all hanging out of the side of my TV or anything like that. It's very compact and it works perfectly. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and move over to my PC. Now I'm going to be side loading RetroArch from this USB drive onto the Amazon Fire Stick. So we need to go ahead and download it. We're also going to add ROMs to the USB stick. So we don't have to do any downloading whatsoever on the Fire Stick itself. Let's move over there now. All right, so now we're going to be setting up our USB drive to be used with the Amazon Fire Stick and an OTG adapter. It's really simple to do. I have a USB 3.0 128GB SanDisk drive here. Right click, Properties. It needs to be formatted FAT32 before we even start. So the first thing I did was create a couple folders on here. APK. This is where we're going to drop our RetroArch APK so we can sideload it. Link for this is in the description. We're going to scroll down here, find Android. Now, if you're installing this on a device with Google Play, you don't need to do this. You can just install it from Google Play. But since the Amazon Fire Stick, the Amazon Fire TV, and the Amazon Fire Cube don't have it pre-installed, we'll have to sideload it. We're just going to click download. It's going to download here. Give it a little while. All right, so after it's done downloading, you're just going to place it right in your APK folder or anywhere on your USB drive as long as you remember where it is. The next thing we're going to be tackling are ROMs. Now I can't tell you exactly where to get them. Just do a quick Google search for no intro ROM set. You can find everything you need. I have mine in a ROMs folder on my USB drive just to make it easy to find everything. I have some NES games, some SNES games, some Neo Geo, Atari 2600. Anything you want, put it on here. I even have some PlayStation 1 games because believe it or not, the Amazon Fire Stick does do PS1 very well. So that's pretty much it for your USB stick. We're now going to plug everything in and move over to the Amazon Fire Stick. All right, so now we have everything set up on our USB drive. If you're not using a USB, you can always download your games and RetroArch through a downloader app. I use Downloader. You're also going to need to download ES File Explorer, even if you're using the USB. We're going to go up to Apps. 
move over to Categories. You can also search with Alexa, but we'll go to Utility, Downloader, and ES File Explorer. If you're not using USB or external storage, you can use the Downloader to search Google for RetroArch, grab the APK. You can also download games. I can't tell you where to get them. Just do a quick Google search. All right, so we have all that out of the way. First thing we need to do is go to the very top, over to settings. We're gonna scroll over until we see device. Now we wanna go down to developer options, apps from unknown sources. We wanna turn this on. Turn it on, that'll allow us to sideload RetroArch. So obviously I'm using a USB drive. We're gonna open up ES File Explorer now it's a bit hard to see here, but we need to go to USB OTG. And you can kind of see that it's outlining these over on the side. Now I'm highlighted on internal storage. We're gonna press down once. It doesn't show that it's highlighted, but we are on USB OTG. We're gonna open it up. Inside of here, we have our APK folder where we placed our RetroArch APK. We also have our ROMs folder. APK, we're gonna go ahead and install this. Make sure you have Install highlighted. Install. We're just going to go to done. Press our home button. From here, we're going to have to go to your apps and channels. We'll scroll all the way over to the very end. See all. And we're going to find RetroArch right here. It's going to do its thing. It's going to extract the base APK, get everything ready for us. Just let it sit until it's finished. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm using a GameSir G3S controller, one of my favorite controllers for Android, and they're fairly cheap on Amazon. It automatically works in RetroArch. Now, there's a few tweaks that I like to do here just to keep it sped up. I'm going to go all the way down until we see user interface. I'll press A. Show advanced settings. I want to turn this on. I'm going to go to appearance. All the way down at the very bottom. Ribbon. I'm going to press left once. That's going to turn the ribbon off. It's not using any CPU power or GPU power now. You can also change the color. I'm just going to leave it on blue. We're going to back up. Now it should automatically save your configuration when you exit, but I always do it on the Amazon Fire Stick just in case it crashes or something like that. We'll go to Configurations, Save Current Configuration. Next time you load it up, it'll save the settings that we just applied. So now it's time to download the emulators. We're just going to be really focusing on SNES, NES, and Sega Genesis. I'm going to go down to Online Updater. I always update core info files first. You can see it's downloading in the lower left hand corner. Update joypad profiles in case they added new controller support and you have one of those controllers. It's just good to update this. Now we're going to go to core updater. From here, there are a ton of emulators or cores to download. You kind of need to decide what you want to use. A lot of this isn't going to work on the Amazon Fire Stick because it's very low power, but I'm going to show you the cores that I use. We're going to scroll on down. As you can see, there are a ton of them. Now, if you want to use DOS, just use DOSBox. Keep going. Like I mentioned, we're only going to be focusing on NES, SNES, and Sega Genesis. Here's SNES. The one I like to use for the Amazon Fire Stick is actually SNES 9X 2005. It'll start scrolling in a second. There's 2010. There's the regular SNES 9X. Let's go with SNES 9X 2005. Press A. It'll download it, extract it for us. Now we need to find Nintendo. I use Quick NES for the Fire Stick. We'll just download Quick NES. And finally, we want to go and find a Sega Genesis core. Pico Drive will do Master System Mega Drive Sega CD 32X. So we can go ahead and download this one. Pico Drive works well. 
Genesis plus GX also works well, but I go with Pico Drive. Now there's a lot of other cores in here, but like I mentioned, this is a very low powered unit. Some Game Boy stuff is going to work. Game Boy Advance should work fairly well. There are a lot of these that are going to work, but you will not be able to play Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, and a few others. We're going to back out by pressing B. Now all we need to do is scan our directory. Scan directory. Storage. We're going to find USB OTG. Scroll down to where you have your ROMs located on your USB drive. I have some NES right here, Nintendo Entertainment System. We're going to scan this directory. If you look in the lower left hand corner, it's scanning all of my games. On the Fire Stick, only scan one directory at a time. Let it finish up. I have seen it kind of get caught on itself and not finish if you do too many at once. Scanning directory has finished. Before we start a game, there's something you really want to do with your controller. We're going to back out. We're going to go to settings, input, and right here, menu toggle gamepad combo. I'm just going to press my analog stick over L3, R3. We want to set it here. When we're in a game, like an NES game, if we press our L3 and R3 buttons, which are our analog sticks, press them in, it's going to bring us back to RetroArch. You can set it pretty much any other way you want. You can use Start and Select, but I prefer using L3 and R3. We're going to back up, and we're going to Configuration. Save your current configuration. Now you can continue scanning for more games. As you can see, I have Atari here. I have some Game Boy Advance. Here's the NES games that I just scanned. And you might notice I got a little artwork. We can very easily download artwork for all of these as long as there are no intro ROM sets. Usually it won't match up if it's not a no intro ROM set. Online updater. Thumbnail updater. And from here, we can download artwork for our games. So if I wanted my Atari 2600 games to show artwork, I'm going to download the Atari2600.zip. It's going to download it, it'll automatically extract it, put it in the correct location. Okay, so it finished downloading and extracting, we're going to move over. Now as long as you have some Atari 2600 games and they've come from a no intro ROM set, you'll find box art here. There's no box art here because it's a prototype. I might as well go ahead and delete this game. But as long as you have a no intro ROM set, you shouldn't have any trouble. Now it's on to playing some games. I showed you how to set up your NES. We're going to go with an NES game and we'll just do Adventure Island 2. Easy game. Click run. It's going to start the game in full screen for us. Detected my game sir gamepad. It's automatically going to work here. And that's pretty much it. You're now playing NES games on your Amazon Fire Stick, your Amazon Fire TV, or your Amazon Fire Cube. And it works really well. There's a lot of tweaks you can do with RetroArch. I actually recommend doing some searching around. There's a lot of information on it. And I have made videos in the past on Android showing a few more tweaks here and there. But overall, you should have a great experience playing NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Sega, Sega Genesis, Sega Master System. Shouldn't have any trouble on the Fire Stick. I'm going to press in my L3 and R3 buttons. It's going to bring me back into RetroArch. Close content. While we're here, let's go ahead and scan one more directory. We'll go to Scan Directory. Storage. USB OTG, ROMs, and we can scan for something else. Now, if you don't have the core downloaded, it's not going to scan it. So, Nintendo Virtual Boy, if I try to scan it now, nothing will show up. It's just going to go through the scanning process really fast. And if I go back to the main menu, 
I have no Virtual Boy. But I can download that core. Online updater, core updater. We'll go all the way down to the bottom here because I think it's way down here. Virtual Boy, Beetle VB. We're going to download this core. We'll back up. Now I'm going to scan that directory one more time. Scan directory, storage, USB OTG, ROMs, and Virtual Boy. Scan. It's going to scan it. It's finished. Back up. Now I will have a Virtual Boy section. Here's all my Virtual Boy games. So that's it. I mean, it's really simple to set up RetroArch. I know it looks a little complicated. Just follow along and you shouldn't have any trouble at all. If you do run into any problems, do a quick Google search. Somebody else has had the same problem you've run into if you're having trouble. RetroArch also has an awesome forum. There are thousands of users over there and a lot of them are really nice. They're willing to help. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. That's it for this video, guys. You now have RetroArch set up on your Amazon Fire Stick. You should be able to play your NES, SNES, Virtual Boy, Sega Genesis games with no trouble. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.